Welcome to Washington In Focus. I'm Brett Davis. Joining me today is the Center Square's Eastern Washington reporter, Timothy Schumann. You recently authored a piece headlined, Washington Department of Ecology Outlines Drought Declaration and $3 million in Grant Funding. So you recently covered a presentation to the Joint Legislative Committee on Water Supply During Drought. That's quite a name. Can you give us some details on drought conditions and how do they determine that in this state? Yeah, the uh, I mean, I think all the details are in the name of the committee, really. Uh, <laughs> I believe they have a committee for everything. But the, the drought conditions are determined essentially by uh, looking at what they call water resource inventory areas, which are watersheds defined within the state. And these watersheds don't, uh, they're not like normal regions. They don't follow any boundaries other than where does water flow when you're looking at the topographical map of the state. So some of them actually cross into Idaho. Um, very few cross into Oregon because there's this thing called the Columbia River in between. So they're uh, literally all over the map. All over the map, up into Canada. And uh, of these 62 watershed regions in Washington state, any of the water flow and stream levels drops below 75% of historical norms. So you move down to the 25th, 24th percentile, uh, it's considered a drought. And so this season at the end of May, uh, the snowpack had gone from around 100% in Washington state to around the 50th percentile. And that had caused 12 of these 62 regions to dip below uh, 25% uh, stream flow rates for historical norms. So now in terms of uh, history, is that normal, average, below average, (laughs) worse? It's significantly below average. Uh, I believe of the 12 regions, three of them actually set historical lows for stream flow data. And uh, much of that stream flow data is going back 75 or 100 years. So Hmm. I think in your story, you you mentioned uh, rapid snow melt in May, and there was something about uh, it. The tide going back to 1958 for the warmest May on, on temperature records that had gone that go back all the way to 1895. Yeah, so uh, the this May averaged throughout the state. Um, you know, it's Washington's a large place with diverse climates, but averaged throughout the state, it was the warmest May on record for you know temperature records that go back over 130 years now. Hmm, wow. So how does the $3 million in grant funding fit into this? Uh, where does that money come from? How does the grant uh, so work? The money, the money actually comes from a recent uh, House Bill uh, 1138 that was signed into law by Governor Jay Inslee on May 4th. Um, and so in previous uh, legislative biennials, the grant funding was essentially – only done in real time by the state legislature. There was no provision written into the law that would uh, grant the Department of Ecology funding to deal with drought conditions outside of the legislative session. It was, you know, kind of they felt it out as the season was going on. And, you know, before the legislature adjourned, they would decide if they needed drought funding or not. And this recent uh, House Bill 1138 uh, added a provision whereby upon the declaration of a drought, uh, of drought conditions, rather, $3 million in funding was immediately made available. You noticed something about the dates in your story. You said the new law went into effect on July 23rd, and then the Department of Ecology declared drought conditions on July 24th. Yeah, so uh, the curiously enough, even though most of the presentation data was focusing on, you know, early May to uh, like early June as the time period where things went from normal to not great in terms of the water flows. Uh, And arguably most of the metrics say that we could have been in drought conditions sometime as early as like mid June. Uh, The declaration by the department of ecology for these drought conditions was not declared officially until July 24th. And if you look at that, uh, the legislation, the House Bill 1138 I mentioned, uh, Mm -hmm. even though it was signed on May 4th by the governor, it didn't go into effect until July 23rd. So within 24 hours of that law going into effect, a drought was declared, um, possibly because there was a $3 million price tag uh, attached to declaring it after the 23rd. 
I see. I guess you could say the heat is on. <laughs> All right. Well, we look forward to your keeping us updated on this. Listeners can keep up with this story and more at thecentersquare.com. For Timothy Schumann, this is Brett Davis. Please subscribe and thanks for listening.